Hi and welcome to the Iron Workshop and this in-depth review of Command & Conquer Remastered Edition. When the remaster was first announced, the first thought I had about it was, oh no, here comes another blow to the bleeding CNC franchise, courtesy of Electronic Arts. Boy was I wrong. The CNC remaster is a solid proof that when EA allows its development teams to create the products they love to make and are passionate about, the result is nothing short of amazing. Sure, the remaster is not perfect and has its issues, but those issues are not big enough to ruin the overall experience. So that's probably a pretty big spoiler to this whole review, but yeah, I love the remake and hopefully this is just the first in a line of quality remastered CNC games. It stands proudly among other recently remastered games such as StarCraft, Age of Empires 2, and work with, uh, <clears throat> yeah, not that one. In this review, I will examine the graphics, the remastered videos, the music, which amazingly is even better than the original, and the gameplay changes in both Command and Conquer Tiberium Dawn and Red Alert. Let's get started. Upgrade complete. Before we talk about the games themselves, I would hate myself if I said nothing about the installers. What? Installers? What is this guy talking about? Okay, so for those of you who did not play the original games, let me start by saying that the original developer of the games, Westwood Studios, had a real fetish for sexy game installers. While other games had the standard boring installer you would have to wait and yawn through, Westwood games had their own unique installers that were in full screen and were designed to get you into the mood of the game, even before you started playing it. The reason that I mentioned this is because the remastered games have also redone the installers from the ground up. This program will install Red Alert. These are not just upscaled videos of a recording of these installers, but a frame by frame remake of the original installers. The reason that this is a big deal for me is because these videos at the start of the game serve zero gameplay purpose, just as the original installers that were very complex had nothing to do with the game, and yet Westwood created them anyway because of how much they were committed to getting you into the game and feeling like you were a part of them. Initialized. This program will upgrade Command & Conquer to high definition video, audio and graphics. Upgrading. Please stand by. So for Petroglyph, Lemon Sky or whoever it was that remastered the installers as well, to waste time and effort on recreating something that has nothing to do with the games themselves shows a level of commitment we rarely see from modern developers. Welcome back, Commander. So, it's unavoidable that we start with the graphics, and there's a lot of beauty to explore there. The graphics for the remastered versions of Red Alert 1 and Tiberium Dawn were created by Lemon Sky Studios, the same people who created the graphics for Warcraft 3 Reforged. Naturally, the studio was caught up in the storm that followed the release of that mess, but when you examine their work closely, it shows that there are very talented people working there. All the graphics in both games had received an upgrade, but in my humble opinion, the Tiberium Dawn remaster is superior to Red Alert. The changes to the units, terrain, and especially the interface are superb. Everything looks sharp and crystal clear. It starts in the main menu, which 100% keeps the vibe and atmosphere of the original games. Every sub-menu is new and looks amazing. In some of them, they even added new information that you didn't have in the original games. So for example, when you load a game, you get a summary of the game with relevant information, such as how much of the map was revealed, how much credits you have, and more. And this attention to details, no matter how small, is really at the core of these remasters. You feel that the people who worked on these games are die-hard CNC fans, and that they wanted to make the best possible remake they could. And the only way to really do that is by knowing these games from the inside out and pushing yourself to both revive the old atmosphere and at the same time give it a fresh feel. This is not something that's easy to achieve, and upsetting the diehard fanbase by pushing it too far with changes is always an option. But the result here is great, and for those of us who played the originals on a 15-inch CRT monitor, 
it teleports you right back to that 9 or 12 year old commander who sees his command interface and is ready to kick some butt. The first remaster I tried was Red Alert, and when I saw the new mission selection screen I thought to myself, wow, that looks great. And it's a bit funny that the developers have insisted on recreating the same map of something which is probably Europe. It's so distorted, so it's hard to tell, uh, but most Paradox gamers will probably experience a surge in their blood sugar levels when they view this map. But it is part of the charm of this game. Nothing has prepared me for the remake of the Tiberium Dawn mission selection screen, which is just stunning. It really looks like a mission selection interface from a sci-fi movie and it's clear that this isn't just an upscaled version of the original one, but a brand new one created specifically for this remake. I can go on forever about the graphics, but to truly experience the changes, you have to play the games and see the difference with your own eyes. With that said, let's move on to the content we get and how dynamic it is. Let's rock! Both games are full of content, simply due to the fact that they contain the original base games and the expansions that were released for them. But on top of that, the remasters have also introduced content that was exclusive to consoles. Now personally, I don't know if the devs of the remasters had a PC version of the console release, but if they didn't, it means that on top of all the work they were already doing with the PC content, they were now also porting content that wasn't made for the PC, and for me personally, the mind blows in how determined they were to bring us, the CNC fans, a complete package of these games. A very cool feature of the remasters is that they allow you to switch between the remastered and the original content. And I don't just mean the graphics, which you can switch on the fly. The sound effects, the music and the voices can all be toggled between the original ones and the new ones included in the remasters. And while this may not be a very useful feature, it is very considerable of the developers to allow those who want a trip down memory lane to get that too even if most of us will probably use the remastered content most of the time. In terms of gameplay, both Red Alert and Tiberium Dawn had some significant improvements introduced to them. But some issues that had plagued the original games are also still present, and can at times cause a real headache when things seem to go wrong without the player having an option to do anything about it. But let's start with the good stuff. It is now possible to select missions that you have completed and play the different variations of these missions. Also, you can change the difficulty. You can also zoom in and out of the battlefield, which allows you to see many details. With the upgraded graphics, this function is really handy if you want to take a closer look at a building or a unit. Unit construction and training can now be queued. A very simple and straightforward thing, but in the original games you would have to click to train a new unit once the last one finished training. Units can now be double-clicked to select the same type of unit, yes, sir. And waiting. which is very handy if you want to counter a certain type of unit. And harvesters will now automatically go and search for resources after they are constructed. Unfortunately, alongside these improvements, there are some basic features that did not make it into the remastered games. First, you cannot set rally points for your buildings, which means that when you produce new units, you have to manually order them to move to an assembly point where you may want them once produced. Second, unit's pathfinding is awful and can lead to many frustrating moments where a unit will pick the last path you would imagine it for it to take to get to its destination. Now, it's important to remember that pathfinding was an issue in all CNC games, but for some reason it feels to be even worse in the remastered games. Sometimes units won't even respond to a command to attack or move and will just stand there until you order them again. Another thing that bothered me is concerned with saved games and the clear absence of an autosave feature, which will cause you in the start to redo missions from the beginning quite a lot, just because you did not manually save the game. And while I understand that this feature was absent from the originals, if we are making a remastered version, why not improve upon it with this basic functionality. On top of that, there is no option to overwrite your save games, so you have to name your save game every time you actually do save your game. And while this may sound like nitpicking, it can actually get quite annoying pretty fast. 
With all that said, these issues do not diminish the positive experience of playing these remasters. A much bigger issue are certain missions that cannot be completed or are failed due to circumstances that are out of the player's control. One example to this is a GDN mission called Dr. Mobius. The mission tasks the player with protecting Dr. Mobius in a small town from not attacks. The problem is that the biggest threat facing the town is not Nod, but the stupidity of its residents. This would be hysterical if I didn't have to repeat this mission 50 times until I figured what's wrong and why my mission kept failing. But here goes. The folks in the town have decided that just because the town has a huge Tiberian blossom tree growing in it, this is not a good enough reason to pack our stuff and leave. So they run around and play in the Tiberian fields around the town. If enough of these idiots die, your mission fails, and the only way to prevent these town folks from dying is to corner them off from the Tiberium, and at the same time fight off attacks from Nod. Now, I can't recall if I encountered something like this when I was playing the original games, but in the remaster this mission can really cause you to pull your hair out. Fortunately, missions like that are rare and can be either avoided by selecting a different starting location or can be completed by creating solutions and workarounds. I can't comment too much on the multiplayer aspect of the remastered games since I haven't played multiplayer myself, but the skirmish mod has been updated with many settings including an option to select your starting location and playing community created maps. Well. What shall we talk about? Okay, now let's talk about those movies. The remastered versions of Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert feature upscaled pre- and post-mission movies. Overall, the improvement in quality is substantial and these briefings are much more pleasing to watch. In some cases, the developers have embedded reworked assets such as the faction logos into the original movies. But this approach is a hit and miss since it depends very much on the level of improvement the video has gone through. It's pretty clear that with some of the briefings the devs had access to the high quality source material, while with others it wasn't available to them, so they had to settle for just an upscale of the footage. For example, the Nod cutscenes in Tiberian Dawn are of great quality. Same goes for the Soviet mission briefings, but the briefings for the Allies in Red Alert are washed out and blurry and you can't really make out the faces of the actors. This is not something that I can truly complain about since without the high quality source material there was only so much that the developers could do to improve these videos. And without a doubt great effort was done to make these briefings as best as they could make them considering the limitations they had to work with. Such a pretty face. No mercy. Ow, ow, ow. mercy is for the weak. Ow, ow, ow. The remastered music is a great way to conclude this review. Frank Lepaki has returned, and while he's not the messiah, his music is king. All the music from Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert has been remastered, and many other tracks have been added. My favorite track being the bonus track, No Mercy, which really gets your blood pumping and includes speech segments by Kane which were taken mostly from Tiberian Sun. Hearing this track while playing as Nod and launching a full-scale invasion of a GDI base is one of a kind experience that only die-hard TNC fans can understand. Other memorable mentions is a remastered version of Mechanical Man, which is longer and in my opinion sounds much better than the original. The total amount of tracks contained in the remasters is 203, so you will always find a track that suits your current gameplay situation. A whole new addition is a jukebox which lists the tracks from Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert and allows you to filter them in case you don't want to mix the two. And on top of that allows you to create your own playlists with your favorite songs. The only change I would love to see is a way to skip tracks without having to open the main menu and go to the jukebox. A skip button in the sidebar could be added to do that and would be a great addition.
So what more can be said about this remastered collection? I think that for fans of the original games this collection is a must-have, and as someone who doesn't get excited about games as I used to, I have been playing this non-stop since release. This almost doesn't happen anymore. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Command & Conquer series or the original games, it can be a great entry point into the series. But you do have to keep in mind that at their core these are pretty old games, so set your expectations of them accordingly. I am very hopeful that the remastered collection will sell well and will encourage EA to remaster the next games in the series, and to do that with the same hands-off approach they had with this one. Under EA, the CNC franchise has seen its up and downs, but this is a chance for them to revive what the CNC fans love so much about these games and the stories they tell. Thank you very much for watching this review, and I will see you on the battlefield. Bye bye. Battle control terminated.